Well, hello everyone. We're gonna try this again. This is tape number two of trying to finish up the book of Romans. So welcome, welcome, welcome to face-to-face -face conversations with God. I had to delete the last post because um, I just it wasn't in it, it wasn't in excellence. And there's no way that I can give something out to God's people if it's not being done in excellence. There was too much going on at right at the beginning so for those of you who were on watching i ask that you just come on back and let's complete what we just started we're going to be finishing up the book of romans and let me get my computer back up and going again we're finishing up the book of romans mm -mm -mm. why is it doing this We're finishing up the book of Romans, chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16. I'm going to try to wait just a few minutes to let everybody get back on again. I try to keep it on my computer running at the same time so that um, I can see all of your comments and respond to you at the same time. All right, so I, I fully understand what's going on. What we, I, I'm learning in the book of Jeremiah is going to, it's going to open up your understanding of what we're dealing with when we're dealing with different spirits. So I'll be doing the book of Jeremiah right after I do this particular broadcast as we end the book of Romans. Um, many of you know that my flight, my schedule has me out on the road a lot. So that's why I wasn't able to read on Tuesday and Wednesday. And I'm doing a double broadcast today and a double broadcast tomorrow that will bring us back up to speed so that we're in line with what's going on for the rest of the month and for the months thereafter. We have guests that are going to be coming on. I'm excited about these guests that are going to be coming on. Um, so keep watching. Keep coming back. For those of you all that I, that you've gotten um, inbox messages from me, thank you so much for those that are responding. And thank you for those that are praying, asking God if this is what you are to do. I'm excited about what God is doing. This thing started out very small, but it is so much bigger than what I could have ever imagined and what I what I could have ever conceived in my own mind. And as it's beginning to unfold, I can see, I'm like, oh my God, I would have never thought of doing it in this manner. So I'm excited about what God is doing. I hope you're excited and I pray that you come back. And if you can't catch us live, don't forget to um, watch the... Um, replays and don't forget to hit the share button i greatly appreciate you all coming on thank you so much and don't forget to hit that share button so that we can have us all reading the word of god from genesis to revelation so we're going to finish up the book of romans i'm reading from the message bible and you can follow along we're going to be reading romans 13 14 15 and 16 today once i end this broadcast i'm going to post it and i'm going to be right back on doing jeremiah one two three and four so you got a double header today all right thank you so much for joining us here we go it says be a good citizen all governments are under god insofar as there is peace and order it's god's order so live responsibly as citizens if you're irresponsible to the state then you're irresponsible with god what? Yes. And God will hold you responsible. Uh-huh. Yeah. Duly constituted authorities are only a threat if you're trying to get by with something. Decent citizens should have nothing to fear. 
So when I was reading this, the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance, I am always speeding down the road. Yes, yeah, so I'm only going 10 miles over, five miles over, but that's still speeding. And what am I doing the whole time? Looking in my rear view, looking up front, you know, trying to see if I see any police so that I can know to slow down. Well, that's not how I'm supposed to drive. I'm supposed to leave. If I know that traffic in my area is heavy, then that must mean that I need to leave a few minutes earlier so that I can get to my destination on time without speeding. And truth be told, even when you speed, those same people that you pass by, what happens when you get to a light once you exit the freeway? Here come one or two of those cars that you pass by that were going slower than you. <laughs> All right, so we just need to slow down. So that may not be yours, but that's what God was showing me that I am not uh, executing very well here in the land that I live in. All right, so let's let's be conscious of what we're doing and not uh, going against the rules of the law that we live under. Okay, verse three. <coughs> Do you want to be on good terms with the government? Be a responsible citizen and you'll get on just fine. The government working to your advantage. But if you're breaking the rules right and left, watch out. The police aren't there just to be admired in their uniforms. God also has an interest in keeping order and he uses them to do it. That's why you must live responsibly not just to avoid punishment but also because it's the right way to live that's also why you pay taxes hello that's why we're supposed to pay taxes not only because the government asks us to pay taxes but because that money is supposed to be used to pay for our police officers and our firemen people that protect us and people that uh help us in times of of trouble okay so that an orderly way of life can be maintained. Fulfill your obligations as a citizen. Pay your taxes, pay your bills, respect your leaders. Don't run up debts, except for the huge debt of love we owe each other. When you love others, you complete the law, I'm sorry, you complete what the law has been after all along, the law code. Don't sleep with another person's spouse. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Don't sleep with another person's spouse. Don't take someone's life. Don't take what isn't yours. It's called stealing. Don't always be wanting what you don't have. That's called covetousness. And any other don'ts you can think of. Whatever don'ts you have in your mind, then don't. Don't do that. <laughs> Finally, adds up to this, love others as well as you love yourself. So I think that that may be a problem that a lot of us have is that we don't love ourselves. So if you have that issue, ask Holy Spirit to teach you how to love yourself. And he's going to show you that God created you and that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And there's not another one like you. And he's going to teach you how to love yourself. Even though you may have never heard how wonderful you are all throughout your life. Growing up, you may have never heard it. As an adult, you may have never heard it. But if you ask Holy Spirit to teach you how to love yourself so that you can love others, I guarantee you he'll do it. All right? That's beautiful. You can't go wrong when you love others. You really can't. When we show love to others, it breaks down all the walls that people put up to protect themselves. And they're only protecting themselves because they've been hurt so many times. Right? When you add up everything in the law code, the sum total is love. But make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-by-day -day obligations that you lose track and time and doze off oblivious to God I've done it you've done it we've gone through our whole day 
we're tired, we're exhausted, our body is just spent. We lay down and we say, oh, I'm going to say my prayers while I'm laying down and dozing off to sleep. And you give two minutes to God of a 24-hour day. We've all done it. Okay, so maybe you gave him five. But let's maybe spend a little bit more time. Maybe you can't spend a whole hour in prayer. Maybe even 15 minutes in prayer is just so far beyond your scope right now. But how about you set a clock and say, okay, I usually go to bed at 10. So at 9.50, I'm going to set my clock. And that tells me in five minutes, I have a, 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 a um, standing invitation to come and talk to God. And you go in there and you talk to him. You will find that five minutes is not enough time. And you will be, begin to increase the time you spend with him. Your language towards him will grow. But let's just start with five. Let's start with the five minutes. And then you'll back that clock up and the next thing you know, it's gonna be 10 minutes. And you'll back that clock up a little bit more and it's gonna be 15 minutes because you have so much to express to him. And it may even be that he'll have you read a scripture. It may even be that he'll have you sing a song. But whatever it is, just spend that time with him, okay? And I promise you, you'll sleep well. You really will, all right? And here's another thing. Because we don't spend time with God, it says it in this next verse that we're going to read. That's when we don't know what God is doing. We don't know how God is moving because we're not spending time with him. All right. It says, <coughs> the night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is, what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on salvation. Work he began when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute. Must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolousness. We can't do that. We're so frivolous with what we do with God. And indulgence. in sleeping around. in dissipation. and bickering. And grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter or linger, waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about it. Be up and about God's business. The same way you get ready for your job and you go to work and you give them everything that, that you've got, give that same energies to God so that he can bless you and use you for his glory, okay? <coughs> <coughs> Glory to your name, Jesus. All right. Uh, chapter 14. Welcome with open arms, fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. What? Yeah. You know how if maybe you go to a certain denomination church, and somebody else goes to another denomination church and you don't necessarily believe everything together? Well, let's look at it like this. The arms and the hands don't do the same thing. The hands reach, the hands can grab. The arms extend so the hands can grab. The brain tells the arms to extend so the hands can grab. The ears listen, the eyes see, the mouth speaks, the feet move, the legs move. All the functions in the body are different. So why do we get so bent out of shape when God is using somebody differently? If they are not going against the word of God, look at how God flows through them. Stop being so closed-minded. There are many people in the body of Christ that I, I listen to myself personally. If I only listened to my pastor, I would be a very narrow person. Not one person houses the full essence of God. We all have a measure of God. 
The only time you turn somebody uh, out or you tune them out is when they're going against this word. You remember the disciples even talked about that. Remember, well, what, what do you? What about those over there? God says, "I have people that you don't even know about running after me." Come on, guys. God is so much bigger than our denominations, and so much bigger than me, my, and this is the way we do it. He's bigger than that. So ask him to broaden your understanding. Broaden yourself so that you can really get the full essence of God. Remember, only you only have a small measure of him. I only have a small measure of him. I know that there are many people doing this same work that I'm doing. And they may be going deeper than I'm going. But this is the way he gave me to do it. Does that make them wrong and, and me right? No. Does that make me wrong and them right? No. We all have a measure. We all have a lane of people that we are to minister to, people that we are to encourage, people that we are to grow up, people that we are to help break the chains off of their lives, okay? That's what I love about the Word of God. It comes in and addresses every issue that we face in our lives, all right? Okay, so I'm going to read that again. Welcome with open arms fellow believers not just anybody that's reading and quoting fellow believers those that believe in Jesus Christ who don't see things the way you do and don't jump all over them every time they say or do something you don't agree with even when it seems that they are strong on opinions but weak in the faith department remember they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. Speaks for itself. For instance, a person who has been around for a while might be convinced that he can eat anything on the table, while another with a different background might assume he should only be a vegetarian and eat accordingly. But since both are guests at Christ's table, not our table, but Christ's table, wouldn't it be terribly rude if they fell to criticizing what the other ate or didn't eat? God, after all, invited them both to the table. It's God that invites us to the table. It's God that calls us. It's God that gives us the works to do. Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list? or interfering with God's welcome? If there are corrections to be made or manners to be learned, God can handle it. That without your help. Wow. Verse five, or say, one person thinks that some days should be set aside as holy and another thinks that each day is pretty much like any other. There are good reasons either way. So each person is free to follow the convictions of their conscience. What's important in all this is that if you keep a holy day, keep it for God's sake. If you eat meat, eat it to the glory of God and thank God for prime rib. Thank God for what you eat. Give him glory. If you're a vegetarian, eat vegetables to the glory of God. And thank God for broccoli. <laughs> if you don't like broccoli, thank God for spinach or asparagus or whatever it is. Corn, potatoes, whatever it is. None of this, none of us are permitted to insist on our own ways in these matters. It's God. We are answerable to all the way from life to death and everything in between. Not each other. That's why Jesus lived and died and then lived again so that he could be our master across the entire range of life and death and free us from, look at this word that the Bible uses, from petty, yep, petty tyrannies of each other. We are so petty sometimes. I know God is looking down going, why are they so petty? Come on, guys, loosen up a little bit. Shake your shoulders and loosen up, all right? Verse 12, 
So where does that leave you when you criticize a brother? And where does that leave you when you condescend a sister? I say it leaves you looking pretty silly or worse. Eventually, we're all going to end up kneeling side by side in the place of judgment before God. Your critical and condescending ways aren't going to improve your position there one bit. Read it for yourself in the scriptures. As I live and breathe, God says, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will tell the honest truth that I and only I am God. So, tend to your knitting. You've got, you've got your hands full just taking care of your own life before God. Wow. Whew, verse 13. Forget about deciding what's right for each other. Let's stop with that. God knows what's best for each of us. We deliver the word. We deliver the truth of God. And Holy Spirit begins to work in that life, okay? Holy Spirit begins to work in that life, okay? Here's what you need to be concerned about. That you don't get in the way of someone else making life more difficult than it already is. Are you making this walk for other people difficult? If you are, stop. It's not that difficult. Let people grow in God. All right? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is so powerful. Let me tell you something. I have put on clothes in my closet. And Holy Spirit said, where are you going with that on? Well, I was going out. No, not today. Not now. No. But then Sister So-and-So can put on the same thing. And she can walk on and do whatever she wants to do in Holy Spirit. I don't know if he talked to her or not. But I can't impose that on her. Just like if, if God tells you, I don't want you to wear any pants. Well, he didn't tell me that. So you can't put that in position on me. All right? You see? And then we get mad because we see somebody in pants. God didn't give him that same directive. Maybe the people that you're going to be dealing with, seeing you in pants would hinder them from hearing the word that is coming from your mouth. All right? So it's okay. Let, let people be who they are in Christ, okay? In Christ. Not just who they are, but in Christ. Who they are in Christ. All right. I mean, this will free you if you let it. This word will free you. All right. I'm convinced. G Jesus convinced me that everything as it is in itself is holy. We, of course, by the way we treat it or talk about it, can contaminate it. What? Yeah, we can contaminate a thing. If you confuse others by making big issues over what they eat or don't eat, you're no longer a companion with them in love, are you? These, remember, are persons for whom Christ died. Each of us, Christ died for us. Would you risk sending them to hell over an, over an item in their diet or something that they're wearing? Come on, is, is it that? Are we that petty? I like that word petty because sometimes I can be pretty petty. All right. I think we all can in certain areas. God is saying, don't be petty. All right. Don't you dare let a piece of God bless food because become an occasion of soul poisoning. Wow. Verse 17, God's kingdom isn't a matter of what you put in your stomach for goodness sake. It's what God's what it's what God does with your life. As he sets it right, puts it together, ha, and completes it with joy. Your task is to single-mindedly serve Christ. My task is to single-mindedly serve Christ. 365 days of the year, 
24 hours in every single day, I am to single-mindedly serve Christ. Not to look at somebody else and say, well, why aren't they doing this and why aren't they doing that? Let Christ mature people and grow them, all right? Just love, okay? Whew. Do that and you'll kill two birds with one stone, pleasing God above and proving your worth to people around you. Verse 19. So let's agree to use all of our energy in getting along with each other. Getting along with each other. Live peaceably with people. <coughs> Help others with encouraging words. Don't drag them down by finding fault. You're certainly not going to permit an argument over what is served or not what is served at supper to wreck God's work among you, are you? I said it before, I'll say it again. All food is good, but it can turn bad if you use it badly. If you use it to trip others up and send them sprawling, when you sit down to a meal, your primary concern should not to be to feed your own face, but to share the life of Jesus. Wow. So think about that when you're sitting at dinner with your family. What are you sharing? Are you sharing love to your children? Or are you berating them? Just think about that. Because these are the things that your children are going to remember all the days of their life. And then they're going to have to get delivered from. So begin to share the word of God while you're sitting there at dinner. Maybe a scripture or two that you, everybody can talk about while you're sitting at dinner. And it will change. Then when it's time for them to go do their homework, it's, it takes on a whole different uh, um, a whole different atmosphere in the home. Okay? All right. So be sensitive <clears throat> and courteous to others who are eating. Don't eat or say or do anything that might interfere with their free exchange of love. How many times have we said things that interfere with the free exchange of love? We need to let that rest in our spirit for a minute. All right? That's, that's heavy. I mean, we read over that, and that just kind of floats right past you, but when you stop and think about it, that's really a serious charge. How many of us say or it says don't eat or say or do things that might interfere with the free exchange of love? Listen to verse 22. Cultivate your own relationship with God, but don't impose it on others. You're fortunate if your behavior and your belief are coherent. Now that right there, your behavior and your belief are supposed to be married to one another. Not apart from one another, but married to one another. But if you're not sure, if you notice that you are acting in ways inconsistent with what you believe, some days trying to impose your opinions on others, other days just trying to please them, then you know what? You're out of line. What? Yeah. If the way you live isn't consistent with what you believe, then it's wrong. So you know when we say this is what the word says, but we do this over here, we just nullified. And the people that you're trying to show the love of God to, they're looking at you like, you know, you're a confused state. Just confusion all around you. All right? Let's, let's, let's let Holy Spirit marry that. So, if you know that you don't do what you say and you don't do what you believe, then let's just step back and say, Holy Spirit, obviously, there's a connection. My foundation is not sure. Let's get my foundation sure. Because they should be married. 
There shouldn't be a separation between what you believe and what you do. All right? All right. Chapter 15. Those of us who are strong and able in the faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who falter and not just do what is most convenient for us. Strength is for service, not status. Each of us needs to look after the good of people around us, asking ourselves, how can I help? How can I help my brother or my sister? How can I help that family at the church? How can I help that family, that, that, uh, that friend that I work with, and I know that they're struggling? How can I help? How can I be a friend, a better friend, right? A better co-worker. How can I help? Listen for the needs of people and try to ask Holy Spirit, not try, ask Holy Spirit, what can I do to help? All right? That's exactly what Jesus did. He didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles, but waited right in and helped. I looked on the troubles of the troubled, is the way the scriptures put it. Even if it was written in scripture long ago, you can be sure it was written for us. Yeah, so that's, that's a, I love that verse. Because even though the Old Testament was written a long time ago, it was for someone else, it's still for us. All right? So those of you that are just New Testament only, you got to read that Old Testament because it's going to show you some things. Jeremiah is going to open up your eyes, okay? All right, get ready. God wants the combination of his steady, consist, I mean, sorry, steady, constant calling and warm personal counsel in scriptures to come to characterize us, keeping us alert for whatever he will do next. May our dependable our dependability steady and warm personal God develop um, maturity in you so that you get along with each other as well as Jesus gets along with us. Lord, develop maturity in us. Develop your maturity in us. Develop your maturity in us. Teach us how to grow up in the natural and in the spirit as we deal with your people and with ourselves. It's time for us to grow up. And at that point, when we do that, then we'll be a choir. Not our voices only, but our very lives singing in harmony in a stunning anthem to God and Father of our Master Jesus. As we come in maturity in God, we join in with others as we're singing a beautiful melody to God through our lives. So reach out and welcome one another to God's glory. Jesus did it, now you do it. Jesus, staying true to God's purposes, reached out in a special way to the Jewish insiders so that one ancestral promise would come true for them. As a result, the non-Jewish outsiders had been able to experience mercy to show appreciation to God. Just think of all the scriptures that will come true in what we do. For instance, they'll, then I'll join outsiders in a hymn him sing, I'll sing to your name. And this one, outsider and insiders rejoice together. And again, people of all nations celebrate God, all colors, all and all races give hearty praise. And then Isaiah's word, there's a root of our ancestor Jesse breaking through the earth and growing tall, a uh, tree tall, tall enough for everyone everywhere to see and to take hope. Oh, may the God of green hope fill you up with joy, fill you up with peace, so that your believing lives fill with the life-giving energy of the Holy Spirit will brim over with hope. That is a prayer that you can pray over your life daily. 
Oh, may the God of green hope fill me up with joy. Fill me up with your peace, God, so that my in my believing, I am filled with the life-giving energy of Holy Spirit. And I'm brimming over with hope. That is a beautiful prayer to pray over your life before you leave out that door every morning. All right? <coughs> Personally, I've been completely satisfied with who you are and what you are doing. You seem to be well motivated and well instructed, quite capable of guiding and advising one another. So my dear friends, don't take me rather bold and, um, oh, I'm sorry. Don't take my rather bold and blunt language as criticism. So what Paul, uh, what Paul has been saying all throughout Romans, remember Romans is a complete letter and he was addressing the people and he came across very strong. A lot of what we read was very strong words, but Paul is saying, don't take it as criticism. Don't be so critical. Don't, don't, don't. Everything is not, every blunt, hard word is not meant to, to beat you down, but it's to show us, hey, if you're doing this, stop. Or if you're doing this, praise God. All right? <coughs> so he says, it's not criticism. I'm simply underlying how very much I need your help in carrying out this highly focused assignment God gave me. This priestly and gospel work of serving the spiritual needs of the non-Jewish outsiders so they can be presented as an acceptable offering to God. That's us. Whole and holy by God's Holy Spirit. Looking back over what has been accomplished and what I have observed, I must say that I'm most pleased in the context of Jesus. I'd even say proud, but only in that context, proud in the, in the Jesus, proud in the work of Jesus in our lives. That's what he's saying. Yeah, I have no interest in giving you a chatty account of my adventures only the wondrously powerful and transformingly present word and deed of Christ in me that triggered a believing response among the outsiders. In such a way, I have trailblazed a preaching of the message of Jesus all the way from Jerusalem far into northwestern Greece. Do you see how many miles Paul traveled? Do you know how far Jerusalem is from, from Greece? He covered all that territory, opening up new works, preaching the gospel to Gentiles. This has been pioneer work, bringing the message only into those places where Jesus was not yet known and worship. My text has been, those who were never told of him, they'll see him. Those who never heard of him, they'll get the message. And that's why it is taking me so long to finally to getting around to coming to you. But now that there's no more pine work to pioneering work to be done in these parts, and since I have looked forward to seeing you for many years, these churches were functioning and Paul wasn't there. All right? I'm planning my visit. I'm headed for Spain and expect to stop off on the way to enjoy a good visit with you and eventually have you send me off with God's blessing. First though, I'm going to Jerusalem to deliver a relief offering to the followers of Jesus there, the Greeks, all the way from the Med uh, uh, Macedonians in the north to the um, Achaeans in the south decided they wanted to take up a collection for the poor among the believers in Jerusalem. They were happy to do this, but it was also their duty. Seeing that they go into all the spiritual gifts that flowed out of Jerusalem community so generously, it is only right that they do what they can to relieve their, their poverty. As soon as I've done this, 
personally handed over this fruit basket, I'm off to Spain with a stopover with you in Rome. My hope is that my visit with you is going to be one of Christ's more extravagant blessings. Wow. Isn't that something that we would want all people to say to us is whenever I'm, I'm in your present, I experience God extravagant blessing flowing through you. Wow. <coughs> I have one request, dear friends. Pray for me. Pray strenuously with us and for me. To God the Father, through the power of our Master Jesus, through the love of the Spirit, that I will be delivered from the lion's den of unbelievers in Judah. Pray also that my relief offering to Jerusalem, to the Jerusalem believers will be accepted in the spirit in which it was given. Then God willing, I will be on my way with you, on my way to you with a light and eager heart, looking forward to being refreshed by your company. God's peace be with all of you. Oh yes. Now, verse 16, <coughs> Paul is telling the people of the work of others who are working in Christ. And, and we need to be sure that we lift up other people when we're doing works, okay? Because they are doing the same thing we're doing, and that is spreading the love of God to people. So he says, be sure to welcome our friend Phoebe in the way of the master with all the generous hospitality we, Christ we Christians are famous for. I heartily endorse both her work, both her and her work. So obviously she was doing a great work for God. She's a key representative of the church at uh, Centuria. Uh, Help her out in whatever she asks. She deserves anything you can do for her. She's helped many a person, including me. <clears throat> Say hello to Priscilla and Aquila, who have worked hand in hand with me in serving Jesus. They once put their lives on the line for me, and I'm not the only one grateful to them. All the non-Jewish uh, gatherings of believers also owe them plenty to say nothing of the church that meets in their house. Hello to my dear friend, um, ooh, their names, Apentis. He was uh, the very first follower of Jesus in the province of Asia. Hello to Mary. What a worker she has turned out to be. Hello to my cousins, uh, and Androsus and Joannes. We once shared a jail cell. Well, that's interesting. How many of you could say that you would go to jail for the things of God? Wow. They were believers in Christ before I was. Both of them are outstanding leaders. <coughs> Hello, um, am, 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 Amp, Lord, I can't say these people's names. My good friend in the family of God. You can see his name. You can say it. Hello, Urab, uh, Arambus, our companion in Christ's work. And my good friend, Statius. Uh, no, that's probably stat, Statius. 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 I bet you it's Statius. Hello to Apellus, a tried and true veteran in uh, following Christ. Hello to the family of our Astolabus. Hello to my cousin Herodion. Hello to those who belong to the Lord from the family of Narcissus. Ooh, Narcissus. Wow. Hello to uh, uh, Typrina and Typosis, such diligent women and serving the master. If I'm tearing their names up, those of you who are Bible scholars, forgive me. I don't know how to say their names. I'm trying to the best of myself. Hello to Persis, a dear friend and a hard worker in Christ. Hello to Rufus, a good choice by the master and his mother. She has also been a dear mother to me. <coughs> hello to um Hello to all these names and also to all their families. Hello to all the followers of Jesus who live with them. Holy embraces all around. 
all the churches of Christ send their warmest greetings. One final word of counsel. Friends, keep a sharp eye out for those who take bits and pieces of teaching that you learned and then use them to make trouble. He said, keep a sharp eye out. Give these people a wide berth. They have no intention of living for our master Christ. They're only in this for what they can get out of it. And they aren't above you in pious, sweet talk to dupe unsuspecting innocence. And so, while there has never been any question about your honesty in these matters, I couldn't be more proud of you. I want you to also be smart, making sure every good thing is the real thing don't be gullible in regard to smooth talking evil stay alert and before you know it the god of peace will come down on satan with both feet stomping him into the dirt enjoy the best of jesus and then he talks about more people he wants to thank I'm not going to try to make their names. All of our praise rise to the one who is strong enough to make you strong. Exactly as preached in Jesus Christ. Precisely as revealed in the mystery kept secret for so long. But now an open book through the prophetic scriptures. Hallelujah. All the nations of the world can now know the truth and be bought into obedient belief, carrying out the orders of God, who got this all started, down to the very last letter. All our praise is focused through Jesus on this incomparable, wise God. Yes. Thank you so much for reading the book of Romans. Go back and read it again. Let it bless you. Let it stir you and let it mature you in the things of God. All right. Well, we'll be back doing the book of Jeremiah in about an hour. We'll be back online. So I pray you'll be back to join us as we start the book of Jeremiah. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you in about an hour. Okay. <music>